In this video, I'll give you a bit of an introduction to the new freeform tools inside Autodesk Inventor 2015 and a bit of an example workflow of how you might use them. So traditionally in Inventor, you usually start with some sketch geometry, 2D sketch geometry, 3D sketch geometry, and then you use that sketch geometry to basically define a 3D feature and you use one of the 3D tools to perhaps extrude or revolve or sweep that geometry to create your solids. Now with Freeform, you're actually starting the other way around. So you start with a 3D surface and you then manipulate that to get the geometry that you're after. So on this little tab here, you can see you've got a number of different primitives. So you just pick the one that's closest to the shape you want to end up with. So for this example, I'm going to start with a box. The familiar plane selection pops up, you pick your reference, and then start to define the overall geometry. So I can push and pull these arrows. I can change the number of faces that I want, which effectively defines how much control I have over that shape. I can choose symmetry planes. And I can adjust the dimensions parametrically. <clears throat> if I click OK on that, I've now got my 3D box. And this is a, a surface model at this stage. It's called a T-spline body. Now the beauty of T-splines is in the manipulation. So you'll see a second button is now opened up on the Freeform tab. And the default is Edit Freeform. If I click that, I've got the option to select either a face, an edge, or a node, or multiples of those. And because I have the symmetry line down the center, I only have to pick the geometry that I want to edit on one side. So for a start, I'm just going to pick that edge, and you can see this little manipulator has, has shown up. Now that manipulator gives me the ability to push and pull in a certain direction. And you can see the effect that that has on the T-spline's body. So at the moment, I'm only working with that center edge. But if I wanted to stretch that whole side up, I might actually select three edges. And it has a slightly different effect. You can also pick a face and perhaps rotate that face. And you also have the ability to change the reference for that manipulator. So if I pick that edge, and I don't actually want to drag it in those directions because they're orthogonal, I can tell it that I want local reference. And that will then align these arrows to, to that edge as normal, if you like, which means that I can drag it in the normal direction. So you can see that it's a very rubbery, flexible, nice way to, to sort of manipulate a, a piece of digital clay, if you like. And once I'm happy with my edits, I can click Finish Freeform, and I have a solid model based on that surface that we were just manipulating. So in that solid now, I can use my normal inventor commands. I'll just create a work plane. I might split that solid so that I've got a flat edge to work with. And then I can do a shell perhaps. Make it two mil wall thickness. And any other tr traditional Inventor solid editing commands like fillet, for example, will work on those edges. I could drill holes in the side if I wanted to. Any of those types of, you know, extrude, revolve, cut operations. Now where it gets really powerful is if I decide downstream that actually maybe that part doesn't quite suit what I want to do and maybe we want a little bit more draft on that front face, I can go back and edit that freeform, use my edit form tools,
manipulate the geometry finish the freeform and all the downstream edits are still there so you can see it's a very robust backwards and forwards type workflow that allows you to make iterative changes quite nicely the other really handy tool in the freeform editing is the ability to match that t-spline surface to some sketch geometry so if i go and create a sketch on the center plane and i decide maybe i have some reference um, geometry of the underlying part i could derive in a sketch from another part whatever it might be but if i slice that graphics i might know just hypothetically that i need an edge along the top to actually that's the the finished result or, or my reference that's where i want that t-splines edge to actually lie so i can dimension that using all the te the normal techniques but if i finish that sketch and move the sketch above the form so that it can see it when i edit that free form on the little edit drop down i can pick match edge and that'll allow me to select this edge and match it to that now you see it's actually made some pretty drastic changes but it's had to do that to maintain its curvature and to keep that edge exactly where we've where we've told it to go but it's still a nice robust t-splines body and if we go back and you can see that 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 edge on the on the solid is now perfectly matching that sketch line that we've placed Now there are some other freeform editing tools in this drop down list. You have the ability to insert edges, for example, where I can pick a single edge and then specify an offset, which will give me some more control over that area. Now I didn't have symmetry turned on in that scenario, so you can see it hasn't done the same thing on the other side. If I want to add symmetry um, later, I can pick the symmetry, select two faces, and it automatically puts a symmetry line down the middle for me. Another useful tool is subdivide. With subdivide, if I pick a face, it will split it up into a number of smaller faces, which then gives me finer control. So perhaps I want to just pull a point out on the center. So I'm going to switch to local space and pull that point out and you can see that it's now sort of got two bulges on those faces previously without subdividing the face i wouldn't have been able to pull the center of the face out so you have to have a t-splines node or an edge to be able to uh, manipulate that geometry we'll finish the freeform again and our downstream edits are still preserved So that's a brief intro to T-splines bodies and how you create them and manipulate them. I hope that's been useful in terms of getting started.